Um, just really some of the things that um, I thought that, that came through today through various speakers. Um, and some of the basics, really, about having the right people with the right skills at the right place at the right time. That is not... Um, that will not solve every problem in the world, but certainly if you don't have those things right, it's a very bad place to start. Um, and we've heard a lot from many of the things. I'm just going to focus on uh, skills. So a lot of actually has come up about um, nurse competencies during this year. It's had a lot of attention from both Cavendish uh, and Berwick uh, in terms of the need to upskill and continually reskill in terms of the nursing community and wider within the, uh, the health sector. What was interesting from the Cavendish uh, review was the acknowledgement actually that, that workers are actually carrying out procedures um, that used to be done by nurses and even doctors. So we're not just in a situation that's static. Things are changing, things are different in different wards, different hospitals, but also there is a movement to push down certain procedures and activities to nurses, to HCAs. And that creates another kind of problem for how that's going to be managed. Because you're not actually managing a status quo, you're actually trying to manage a changing landscape, which has always been with the NHS, because they're always making changes um, that you have to implement. This last comment, which was very interesting, because this um, is really what City University and Nurse Excel have been thinking about and researching for the last seven years. Um, how can you have a system like the NHS devoted to continual learning? And that was the big takeaway from Don Berwick's um, report. I don't think many people would disagree with it, but when you actually start to think about implementing that, <laughs> then you start looking at the devil in the detail. It's easy to have a vision and then say, go off and you just go off and implement that. And then when you start looking at it, it's not as easy um, as just one um, quote suggests. So there's a, quite a few problems, but the first one, how can you implement the system with continual learning if you don't know what you don't know? If you don't know what people need to know, and you don't know what they actually know, then how are you going to continually um, uh, develop, their, develop their knowledge? So we've got a term for this in terms of your... You're not talking about a small group, you're talking about thousands of nurses potentially within your organisation. And you will obviously know um, gaps in their knowledge and, and where the training needs to focus on. But the question is, is what you don't know. Within that changing landscape of, of agency workers, with bank workers, with people that are coming on, people that are leaving, people that are moving between one ward and another ward, and then the changing needs of some of the medical devices that you have and the training around that, and the changing procedures that you have within, this, um, within many organisations. It's not static. Um, so we call that the, the knowledge iceberg. So that's problem number one. You don't know what you don't know. So the solution that we think we have for this within Nurse XL is test-driven learning. Test-driven learning focuses on testing and, and uh, what you don't know, um, and then signposting you to the learning. So rather than giving, and I'll come on to this in a bit more step, rather than giving everyone blanket learning, getting them a tick box to fill in and say, yes, do you know this? It actually validates that you know um, uh, the particular topic area. And if you don't, then it will alert that to the people that need to know and signpost you to where the training is. By having a system which actually um, validates and is very targeted, it actually starts to uncover the knowledge landscape. That iceberg suddenly becomes clear. And it's not just, of course, in terms of nurse competencies, it's also in terms of the training materials and where they exist and whether they exist at the right quality and are accessible. So the first thing it starts to do is to uncover um, the reality of, um, of the uh, uh, knowledge within the organisation. Problem number two 
is time to learn versus time to care. So it's great saying we've got to be a, um, a system of continual learning, but actually nurses do have to spend time with patients. And whilst they will get better at caring for patients if they spend time learning, if they're not with the patients, then you're going to have a degradation of care. So there's this catch-22 situation where we all know that, that, that we get better if we, if we continue to learn and therefore the quality will improve, but we also need to have nurses spending time with patients. So this was one of the things that was actually key for us and, and the benefit with Nurse Excel is obviously that the, the test modules which we are very focused take about three to five minutes. Because if you, if you start turning around to nurses and saying you have to take a long period of, of time against the patient, you just haven't got time. Any system or any process has got to fit within the reality of the ward and the reality of nurse time and the priorities and pressures that nurses are under all the time. Problem number three um, is it's great having a system of continuing um, learning, but how is that going to be funded? So when the NHS and organisations are already under pressure, um, including with the, the training budgets, how can we take afford the time? It's not just the time, of course, in terms of putting on courses and training. It's also the cost of taking nurses away from the front line and then having to backfill um, with agency or bank staff, or worse, making do. Um, the solution of Nurse Excel is that because it targets the gaps in people's knowledge, it focuses on the need rather than the reach. So instead of uh, wasting your training budget training everyone up, Nurse Excel will identify those that actually need uh, the training and direct them to that. So therefore, you're actually being able to stretch your, your budget further, but also you can achieve more with the existing budget. And it's well known that the, often the training budgets, the biggest proportion of staff within the NHS are nurses, not doctors and GPs and consultants. But the majority of the, the training budget doesn't go to nurses. <laughs> So if we're going to have a continuous uh, system of continuing development of, of um, training, we need to, and nurses are spending the majority of the time with the patients, then something's probably got to change too about where the, the, uh, the budget gets focused on. But this is one way of making it go further and reach where the gaps are identified. <coughs> so this was our view. Um, after seven years of, of research um, at City University. And one of the things that, obviously, it's good to have a, um, some research, but it's also good to put it to test and to validate whether the solution meets uh, the needs of the NHS. So we just recently conducted a three-month pilot across three hospitals within London. The results were pretty much, we hoped, obviously, for positive results. This was beyond what we hoped for. Um, in terms of the um, response that we got from the staff. The particular thing was absolutely key, which was easy to use. We want nurses spending their time learning the topic, not learning the tool. And if you start having, and most of the time when I talk to the, the NHS about software solutions, the biggest complaint, integration is, <laughs> is one, <laughs> but just as high as integration is, it's horrible to use. Um, and everybody now, and you're getting people coming in, obviously, with iPads and iPhones, and you can make things simple. And people's expectations now are much, much higher than they were 10 years ago. They want easy-to-use systems. So, so we were very pleased about that. Um, the second element was the time required, because we know, and the biggest issue for us in terms of the, the pilot, was would nurses have the time to participate? because they're all under uh, a lot of pressure. And 94% stated that it was just the time was perfect in terms of the test modules. So we thought those two key metrics were the most important. If we failed on those two, I think you'd agree we'd probably get nowhere in, in, the, uh, in the NHS. But again, the other, the other factors were very, very positive for us as well. I'm almost over. <laughs> You'll be pleased to know.
I'll go through some of the, the, the final um, anecdotal uh, comments that we also um, had fed back to us from nurses. It was nurses, HCAs, matrons, ward managers, so it was a quite an extensive pilot and very positive results. But the, the, what really, really took us back in all of this was there was a high level of engagement from the nurses. This was in a trust um, which was undergoing significant change um, and you could assume that the morale was very, very low. And yet the response that we got from the um, staff was pretty amazing. And this said one thing to me, that um, this, the nurses weren't a passive workforce. The nurses wanted Berwick and Cavendish, but they didn't have a tool that enabled that to take place. And as soon as you provided a tool um, to enable nurses to actually participate, and this was very much, this wasn't policy that they had to, this wasn't a diktat from above, this was an optional thing that nurses could participate in. So they were under absolutely zero obligation to do that. And so we were quite bold back to, to think that actually, it showed actually that the, the trust actually cared about the staff and their personal development, and it provided a tool that they could use, couldn't use if they decided, and they all voted um, by taking participation in there and felt it of uh, value. So anyway, I will, I will stop. <coughs> Other than to say, if you want to find out anything more about Nurse Excel, see anyone with a blue badge, we've got a stand outside. Don't forget to fill in your feedback forms and take them to Nurse Excel stand if you want to participate in the prize draw. Um, I hope, I, I want to thank again the speakers and for their uh, taking their time out, which I hope that you all gained, I certainly got a lot of insights from, so I want to thank speakers again. Wish you a Merry Christmas. And for anyone that's having to work over Christmas in the NHS, I just want to thank you, okay? So, <laughs> the food's out there. <laughs> that's what you're waiting for.